Welcome to our lecture online and next we're going to do a little exploration of what we call vision correction. A lot of us need help with our eyes and uh, that's because either we are what we call nearsighted or we are farsighted. And if we're nearsighted we call that myopia, if we're farsighted we call that hyperopia. And what we mean by nearsighted is that a person who's nearsighted can see things clearly nearby, that's why they're nearsighted, but things that are far away are not very clear, they, they can get that into focus, it looks very fuzzy. People that are farsighted are the other way around. They can see things clearly far away, but when things come close by, when you bring up close by like a book, it's hard to focus on the letters and they're hard to read because they're, they're not very focused. And so that's called farsighted. And so how does that work? Why is it that we have these different conditions? Well, I would say that nearsightedness is probably uh, experienced by about half the population. So half the population approximately needs eyeglasses, contact lenses or eyeglasses, and this is why they need that. Let's say that you're trying to look at something that's very far away. So this object, um, and so we can say that the distance to the object is approximately infinity. Of course, it's not really infinity, but things that are really far away in, the, in a way when we use the lens equation act as if it's uh, at infinity. That means that the eye will, there's muscles in the eye that will pull on the lens, try to stretch the lens, and when the lens is stretched, it will pull the focal point farther to the right. The reason why the eye needs to do that is because objects that are very far away will form an image very close to the focal point, just right behind it. And if the focal point can be put near the back of the eye, where the retina is, then the image will not form on the retina, it will form before the retina, and so the rays that then reach the retina will not be very focused and the image will look fuzzy. All right, so the objective then is to get the, to get the focal point to be further back. But the only thing the eye can do is let go on those muscles, for example, and we do that involuntarily, we don't need to try that, we don't sit there and try to exercise our eyeballs, it just naturally. So if we relax our, our muscles in the eye, then the eye will bulge up naturally, but then all that does is bring the focal point even closer, which means you can see even worse at objects that are far away. Matter of fact, this is what we do when we, want, when we want to see things close up, because when objects come closer, that automatically cause the image to fall farther back um, uh, away from the focal point, and so the bulge in the lens brings the focal point in and allows a image that, of something that's close up to form at the back of the eye. So if a nearsighted person, the farthest back that the focal point can be is in front of the, the retina and not far enough back, there really isn't anything else that person can do. So the only thing left to do is put a corrective lens in front of the eyeball, and of course that's not typically what the lens looks like, but I just wanted the shape of a diverging lens because that caused the rays to diverge a little bit further, causes the focal point to fall further back, and then an object that's far away can then form an image right on the retina like that. So that's why when you're nearsighted, you need a diverging lens to put the focal point further back so an image can form clearly on the retina when you look at things that are far away. A farsighted person, it's a little different. <clears throat> A far-sighted person has no problem looking at objects that are really far away because the lens is shaped in such a way and the eyeball is shaped in such a way that when the muscles pull on the lens and the lens gets made thinner, the focal point falls far enough back so then an image is formed right there. The image is formed which is right past the focal point and right on the retina. So no problems for people that are far-sighted to see things far clearly. But then what happens is when you bring the object closer, then of course the, the muscles will let go, the lens begins to shape more like this, that brings the focal point in, but if the lens doesn't bulge up enough, and of course there's no muscles that make the lens bulge up, the lens bulges by itself if the muscles don't stretch it. Now as people get older, the lens doesn't quite get back to its normal shape, in a more bulge shape when, uh, because, like they were uh, when they were younger, which means that the focal point doesn't get pulled to the left enough, which means that the image, which then of course falls far past the focal point when the object is closed, falls past the retina, and therefore that image will look uh, very uh, fuzzy, it will not look clear or crisp. So the only way to do that, since the muscles, uh, when they're relaxed, don't allow the lens to move to the right or bulge up enough, as I should say, 
uh, then we need some help to make that happen. So a second converging lens in front of the eyeball lens will cause the focal point to move further to the left, which will bring the image into the left as well, which then will fall right on the retina, and then you'll see clearly. These are then called reading glasses, lenses of reading glasses. They're converging glasses. It's kind of like a magnifying glass. It simply brings the Im image in closer, and you can then see things clearly. And that's how we correct vision, either if you are nearsighted or you're farsighted. And so the next several videos will actually do some practical things. We'll actually, depending upon the eyesight, figure out what kind of lens you need in order to see clearly if you're either farsighted or if you're nearsighted. That's next.